Hello everyone, I'm uh, Sabrul Islam, uh, founder of the Inspire One Million campaign here in Bangladesh after 20 years. You know, it's been a huge, huge vision I had to come to Bangladesh to be able to make an impact, to be able to inspire. And uh, there's a saying that uh, money isn't all too difficult to make in modern day society. The real challenge is to be able to make a difference. Now when I heard about all these issues here in Bangladesh, the political issues, the young generation, who are in fact have a lot of potential, they have wonderful potential. But it's not nurtured and guided in the right way. And I felt like, yes, I've opened up this Inspire One Million campaign in, uh, in November 2010, which is when I launched it. When I launched the Inspire One Million campaign, I've been knocking on the doors of Bangladesh saying, I want to be able to make a difference in my home country, in my home community, to be able to come and show the young people, show the entire nation, that no matter the age, race, religion, culture, or where you are from in society, no matter what lack of resources, no matter what problems that exist, everybody has the ability to be able to make something happen, no matter how big or small. You know, I've heard coming here over the past seven, eight days that, uh, yes, there are so many issues here in Bangladesh. But I think from a very enterprising perspective as an entrepreneur, that problems are the best thing that are, that are around you. Because end of the day, compare Bangladesh to a canvas. You know, I'm from London, I was born and raised in a London in a very poor community. You know, Bangladesh is on my right hand as a, as a half empty canvas, yet UK is almost fully painted. So when you try and put it into that perspective, if Bangladesh is a half empty canvas, it's waiting. It's waiting for people like you, every single individual in this nation to be able to use their imagination, their creativity. The younger they are, the better it is to be able to use their imagination and creativity to be able to start painting this picture. Because if you yourself don't pick up that paintbrush and start painting this picture, then why should the whole government, why should the entire nation worry or bother about you? So we take our own initiatives to be able to do something. So why I came here is to be able to change a mindset. To be able to change the mindset that no matter who you are, where you are, from what society, what difficulties you face, that in fact positive mindset, having that positive mindset is the ultimate way to go forward. So who am I? You know, my name is Sabirul Islam. And uh, born and raised in, uh, in London. And people hear about London, ah, oh, glitz and glamour, there's so much things happening in London. In fact, my parents are from Silet. Now, when my parents are from Silet, and uh, they had this uh, idea that, you know, a lot of the majority of the people I've co communicated with from Silet, they had this idea that oh, we'll go to London, become mega rich very quickly, and uh, all sorts of opportunities come. But they flew over to London and found it very difficult to land themselves a job. Now, if you're landing self a job is very difficult in a developed nation, why are you leaving in the first place? That you left behind a fortress. You left behind a nation full of problems, which as an entrepreneur is the perfect situation to be in because it's waiting for people to start finding solutions to fix those problems. Now, this struggle I faced growing up in East London, in Tower Hamlets, a borough in East London, you know, 90% of the people never had a job. And my parents fell victim to that, not managing to land themselves a job. I've got two younger brothers, three younger sisters. And in that community, you know, in fact, I was diagnosed with epilepsy at the age of 11. So a medical illness that kind of restricted me from achieving my dream, which was to travel the world. Now, all these negative factors that the society, the community, it doesn't land themselves a job are relying on what the government is providing them, wanting to be spoon fed by society. Now, that's a mindset our culture has, that whatever the government provides will we'll be settled for, you know, satisfied with for a few, few months, few years until something they do that we do not appreciate and suddenly we have a go at them. But it is not about having go at the people who are high up and saying it's your fault, your fault. No, it is our fault. Because we do not take the initiative to stand up on our own two feet and to realize who we are and the potential we hold in this world. Because I compare that everybody in this world is a diamond. You know, everybody in this world is a diamond that they're worth something valuable. And if I can see that individuals around the world are this valuable diamond, you know, that means there's one of you. There's only one of you in this world out of seven billion, which makes you exceptionally unique and worth exceptional amounts to the rest of the world. And when you see that perspective, when you see that perspective that you are worth something in this world and you understand what self-discovery is, you realize the whole world comes chasing after you at all cost. You know, I got into business and entrepreneurship at the age of 14. How I got in there, I set up my first business because I was in fact working for my cousin, uh, who's a year older than me. And being from a Bangladeshi background, I was told that I must have a university degree, otherwise I'm deemed unsuccessful in this world. You know, this whole thing about marriage, that I, from a Sileti background, they said that in, uh, in life when you get married, arranged marriage is generally the way it's done in, in Silet. The way they do is that without a university degree that you cannot get married. But the first thing they look at is your photo, oh, very handsome guy. They look at Sabir, he's a very handsome guy, and they look at my CV. In fact, I have not gone to university, and they look at my CV and go, oh, Sabir doesn't have a degree. 
It doesn't mean I'm never going to get married here. So this whole idea that degree is everything. In fact, I say to everybody here, degree is one aspect of life. Our culture makes it so valuable that without a degree, we are deemed so unsuccessful that we cannot do anything without this degree. And in fact, our parents wanted to accomplish something in life. They had this dream, they had this passion. And the child wants to be an astronaut, the child wants to be a pilot, the child wants to be whatever. And our parents enforce it upon our kids that I want you to become a doctor. Now, if that's the mentality that in the 1970s, 1980s culture is being enforced upon our young children nowadays, then the culture in the country will never evolve. You know, my cousin went against this whole mentality, this Bangladeshi culture, and set up his own business at the age of 14, which completely blew me away. I was working for my cousin for two weeks. My parents didn't work, so I didn't know what employment was. I was just working for him, put up my feet, thinking, yeah, let him make the money and I'll get paid. Two weeks later, I got fired. And in fact, getting fired was the best thing that ever happened to me. You know how many people can actually say that? That getting fired was the best thing that happened to you. Initially, it hurt. Of course it hurts. You face a rejection, a failure in life. It absolutely ruins you. But unless you're able to stand up on your own two feet and realize that, in fact, you are worth more than what society perceives you to be, having that confidence that you are worth something in this world, you'll be able to prove society wrong. So I set up my own company, not to make money, to prove to my cousin that he made a mistake. Ran a web design company for two years, hit the age of 16, uh, closed the company down because this is when a, a question struck me. Sabiru, when you leave this world, what will you be remembered for? Now, it's this question that really made me think that if I'm actually worth something in this world, then I must be remembered for something, that I must leave behind a legacy. And web design wasn't it. In fact, I got into stock trading, tried something else in life. That again wasn't for me. Did it for about nine months. Then at the age of 17, wrote my own book called The World at Your Feet for the first time to give back to society. That age isn't a factor. That even if you're age 54, 60, or if you're age 8 or 9, however old you are, you can still do something exceptional in life. Only if you have a dream, if you have a vision, and you have the power of the people supporting you. You know, your, your own family, your own community may not value you. That doesn't mean somebody halfway across the world will absolutely cherish the purpose of your existence in this world. That's why I understand that you mean something in this world. So I wrote the book called The World at Your Feet. And The World at Your Feet is simply to inspire that no matter age, race, religion, culture, where you are from society, providing a mess, simple messages that everybody has the ability to be extraordinary. And the book went on to sell 42,500 copies in nine months. And it was a self-published book because I was rejected by 40 publishers. So I kept facing rejection, 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 but I could have chosen to accept it or prove society wrong. So for me, this journey continued. I got the book professionally published at the age of 18, which then uh, helped me launch a, a business board game. Because for the first time, I not only want to inspire my community, but also to educate them. There's something I call the cycle of success in life. Inspiration, knowledge, opportunity. Inspiring I did through the lectures I gave through my book. Education I did through the board game that I produced. This board game is a monopoly style board game where in fact uh, I want to bring here to Bangladesh and this game in fact sold to 650 schools in the UK and in 14 countries around the world and it's used as, to and it's used as part of the business studies qualification in those uh, 14 countries. Where there's six businesses in the game where you run your own business to grow your business from a local national to an international franchise, understanding what sales is, what marketing is, what the stock exchange is, how to invest, how to invest in other players in the game, how to in, uh, understand about loans. All these things about the real world that I've incorporated into a game at the age of 18, which has now sold over half a million copies around the world. So to come and bring that over here, this concept over here to Bangladesh is something I have a huge passion for. And in fact, uh, he launched the Inspire One Million campaign, having uh, won the JCI 10 Outstanding Young Person of the World Award in November 2010. Now, JCI have been a huge support to me because JCI uh, is an organization to create active citizens who only just with a good heart give back to society. You know, for me, the JCI have supported me in 18 of the 26 countries I've been to as part of the Inspire One Million campaign. And the whole Inspire One Million idea is just to travel the world, inspire and deliver events to inspire as many people as possible to change their mindset to have an enterprising approach in life. And now I'm here in Bangladesh, and this is the 26th country to take part in the Inspire One Million campaign. First country was the Maldives in May 2011, supported by JCI. Second country was Botswana. In fact, in Botswana, I delivered 43 events in 12 days in 10 cities in Botswana. You know, I, here in Bangladesh, we had a total audience size uh, delivering 15 events in four cities in seven days. We had a total audience of around five and a half thousand. In Botswana, in Africa, I got to learn that Africa is very hungry for success. And that's a mentality we need here in Bangladesh, to be hungry for success, to be hungry for knowledge, to be hungry for certain things that other people may provide you through, through goodwill. 
just to take that opportunity. And in Botswana, after delivering 43 events, 200,000 people showed up in audience size. And in fact, the whole journey has been an amazing experience. Since May 2011 to sitting here, right here, talking to you now, I've delivered over 770 events around the world since May 2011. And I've spoken uh, at those 700, reaching out to 890,000 plus people in audience size. And my goal, my vision for Bangladesh for the Inspire 1 million is that the 1 million mark, once I reach around 995, 96,000 people reached to mark the 1 million in my home nation. To get the biggest venue there is here in Bangladesh and say and invite as many people, as many young people, as many uh, media presences, just to come to the event to cut the ribbon and say the Inspire 1 million was marked here in in Bangladesh, my home nation. After 20 years, I finally made it. But it wasn't easy. Nothing's easy in life. I was knocking on the doors of Bangladesh for three years to make this happen. And finally, because people connect with your passion, not everybody buys into who you are. But there's always going to be somebody. And when that one person buys into your passion so much, they can go to extreme lengths to make your idea become a reality. And I came here in Bangladesh in uh, September 23, landed 4 a.m. in the airport. Six hours later, I delivered my first event here in this wonderful, wonderful place at Daffodil University with the support of the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce. And it was at that event, by the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce at Daffodil University, where we in fact launched National Enterprise Week for the first time here in Bangladesh with the support of the DCCI. So the Inspire One Million helped trigger Entrepreneurship Week here in, in Bangladesh. And, I, and that is for me an absolute privilege. Because on, in entrepreneurship big is a, is a global thing. It happens all around the world. And to finally bring it to Bangladesh with the support of the DCCI has been wonderful. And in fact, I've delivered 15 events now, 5,500 people. The media support has been wonderful with the support of Pratham Allah, with the support of Masranga TV and all the other interviews that I've done from all the other newspapers, etc., that have come and supported. You know, the whole idea isn't just to inspire, isn't just to educate, but to provide the opportunity as well. Like I said, the cycle of success. So working with the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industries, we in fact want to create a minimum of 2,000 young entrepreneurs here in Bangladesh. That whatever passion, whatever dedication and dream you have that you want to be an entrepreneur, you cannot use the excuse that the resources aren't there. Because the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industries have launched this opportunity to help 2,000 young entrepreneurs submit their idea on www.business.org.bd. So whatever passion, whatever idea that you feel you're hungry for success, you want to be an entrepreneur, please do submit your idea. Because we want to help mentor, we want to help guide, we want to help inspire, we want to help provide you the funding you need to be able to make your idea become a reality. And this is what the whole cycle of success is. You know, the Inspire One Million, the launch of Entrepreneurship Week here in Bangladesh was just an inspirational thing. The board game that I'm bringing is to educate, delivering training programs. So once I develop a Bangladeshi version of the board game here, you know, bringing on board corporate organizations to support understanding what the stock exchange is, bringing stock exchange companies, distributing out to every single school here in Bangladesh, 64 districts, reaching out, teaching entrepreneurship and enterprise through grassroots levels. You know, training 100 or so people to be able to go deliver these workshops, deliver these training programs, using the game to educate young people about entrepreneurship. And in fact, just yesterday, you know, the final event marked at Protamalo, and they came to me and said, Saibu, we'd love to publish your book here in, in Bangladesh, in Bangla. So that means I've now got my books, all of my books going to be published in Bangla, here in Bangladesh. And it me, brings me so much honor, you know. And to finally realize that I've come here in Bangladesh experience, I got very emotional after this event in Protomalo because uh, not only did I uh, have the opportunity to get my books published, I'll become a regular columnist for Shopnani on Protomalo every Sunday. So that for me is a phenomenal achievement. But everything happened in life because of that moment my cousin fired me, telling me, Sabrol, you are not good enough. And we get that a lot in life. We are told we're not good enough by people. We are told we cannot achieve certain things. But end of the day, we either choose to accept it or prove society wrong. You know, so this journey will continue. It's not only that. In fact, I want to launch a foundation here also. My own personal foundation I want to launch here in Bangladesh to give young people with small ideas with big ideas, with ambition, with dream, the opportunity to be guided, to be supported, and to receive small amount of investment to be able to make their idea happen. And I've got this broad vision, this broad dream. It's just planting the seed. The Inspire One Million is not just me coming here to Bangladesh, oh, hello Bangladesh, and after seven days saying goodbye. No, my vision is broader than that. And this is the visit, first visit of multiple visits here in Bangladesh, because I love my home nation. For the first time, I've woken up to be able to love my home nation and to see that every single event that I've delivered, the response I've received, that is priceless. Because not only that, you know, it's not about just saying, you know, hi, Sabrul, you've inspired us, now goodbye. No, it's about giving each and every one of those individuals an opportunity. 
and the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce, Junior Chamber International, Potamalo, all everybody who has supported has made this a remarkable, remarkable journey. And I will not forget these moments ever in my life because it is because of you, it is because of these organizations that I'm here. And people say to me, well, it must have cost you a fortune to travel the world. Our mentality in our culture around the world is that everything costs money. It didn't cost me money to travel the world. It didn't cost me money to make my books, to make my game, nothing. Because when you have a dream in life, when you have a passion and you have a dedication that you want to accomplish something, believe in the power of people because they are the greatest assets. They make things happen for you. And when somebody connects with your passion, automatically they will go to extreme lengths to make it become a reality. So love the people around you. And make sure the cultural thing doesn't affect you too much, especially the females. And culture comes in the way, oh, you must get married when you hit the age of 20. No. At the end of the day, whatever vision, whatever dream you have, go pursue it. Even if that means jumping out of the cultural barrier. Even if it means proving people wrong. Even if it means going against your parents. Why? Because we, it is up to us as the young generation to be able to educate them about modern day society. About the modern day opportunity. And that's the best way to go forward in life. And before I finish, I just want to leave you with the seven Ps. Always have a positive mindset in life. No matter how bad the situation is. Mentality is the most important thing. Passion. Do what you want to do. Follow your dream and desire. Something you die for to achieve in life. Perseverance. Hard work. Nothing happens in this life without hard work. Work smart as well. Know the right people. Everybody. Get connected. Next is persistence. I tried three years to come to Bangladesh. I could have given up after the first university told me they don't want me because I'm, I'm, Bangla I'm from a Bangladeshi culture. A Bangladeshi community. So my own community went against me. But I kept knocking, kept trying, kept trying to make it happen because I wanted to. And that's the spirit we all need. That I can do it mentality. So three years, suddenly I'm sitting on this chair talking to you. And that's what persistence, persistence pays off. And I'm sure you've all heard that. Next is purpose. Live life with meaning. Because your, your life tells a wonderful story. And you want to make that story as beautiful as possible. Next is patience. You know, nothing happens overnight. Everything takes time. But just be patient. And on top of that patience, try and do many things on top. Try and not just live one life that has one opportunity, but this one life that has multiple opportunities, multiple things. One opportunity creates ten more doors. And the seventh P which I want to leave you, which I want each and every one of you to believe in, is the power of people. That even if you're not valued by your own community, by your own family, by your own society, that doesn't mean somebody halfway across the world will absolutely cherish and admire you. And that's vital. I've now traveled 26 countries. You know, I, I'm, my business is all mobile. I don't have an office. I don't have a suit. I don't have this and that. I try and be as casual as normal as possible, more down to us so I can communicate with people. And in those 26 countries, there are people working there, you know, really hard to be able to make those visions and dreams become a reality, my ideas, because I want to implement them. So believe in the power of people. So I hope I've inspired you all to bring the world at your feet. Well, I just want to say a huge thank you to, to Prio.com and uh, for, for all of you listening in, for tuning in, because uh, there's wonderful organization out there supporting you and uh, Prio.com is one of them. And I'm humble and I'm grateful sitting here doing this interview right here, right now with you. So uh, get connected, make the most of what exists and uh, Prio.com, a wonderful platform to be associated with. And I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you very much.